Hi everyone, today I'll be reviewing my stationery and not just a few things, but pretty much everything I own. I've been a stationery hoarder for three years, so I actually have a whole cart just filled with stationery. Yeah. So I'll be reviewing everything. Pens, pencils, markers, all with swatches, also notebooks and pencil cases. So without further ado, let's get started. So to start off, I chose probably one of the most known pieces of stationery, which is a zebra mild liner. I literally don't think it's possible to ask a student what a mild liner is and they don't know what it is, but if you don't know, it's a two-sided highlighter. One side has an angle for highlighting and the other side is a fine point pen. I think these are great pens and you can do a lot with them other than just highlighting your notes. People use these for titles, drawings, and doodles, and I think they're bomb for notes. What I really love about these is that they last a long time. I still have the ones I first bought from two and a half years ago, and they work great still. I don't really have a problem with these except for the fact that the fine point wears out immediately. Seriously, you'll use it one or two times and it's already worn out, so it's not really that fine of a pen at that point so it gets an 8 out of 10. There are not only mild lighter highlighters, but there are also mild lighter brush pens. These have the same dual pen concept, except for one side is a brush pen and the other side is a super fine point. I have to say, I use these a bunch for my note titles and I really like them. They have the exact same colors as the highlighters, so there's no mismatch if you want to use the yellow brush pen, the yellow highlighter, and the super fine point actually stays fine. I have to give these a 9 out of 10 because they're pretty much perfect. It's just the brush pen wore out pretty quick, so it made way bigger lines than it used to. It seriously wore out a little too fast than it should have. You know, it shouldn't wear out after two or three times of me using it. No, to be fair, I got these as soon as they came out, which was about a year ago, I believe. So they could have improved that part, but other than that, they are awesome, and I love how the colors match perfectly to the highlighters. This is a Muji Knock type gel pen. It's pretty similar to the Muji Cap pen in terms of the body, but the ink is a lot better. It comes in every color of the rainbow, but it only comes in one size, which is 0.5 millimeters. Personally, I do not mind, but some prefer 0.7 or 1 millimeter. This is one of the smoothest pens I've ever used, and I've never had any stuttering with the ink, and it's never dried out or anything, so that makes the pens one of my favorites. This gets a 10 out of 10 easily because they're just priced fairly at $1.50 for a pen, and they write so smoothly, so I really enjoy using these for long periods of times while taking notes or just using them for my journals. Moving on to the Muji Cap Gel pen. It's similar to the knock type, it really just has a cap and a slightly skinnier base. This pen also does come in different sizes, which are 0.38 millimeters and 0.5 millimeters. I'm gonna be dead honest, this pen is just overrated. I don't know why, but this pen just absolutely pisses me off because the ink doesn't flow at all, and it often has a problem just getting the ink onto the paper, which is a basic function of a pen. This gets a 2 out of 10 because there's just nothing special about it other than looking aesthetic, but in terms of working well, it just doesn't. So I personally recommend you go spend your money on the knock type instead. These are Papermint Ink Joys, which come in a bunch of colors and shades, and you can pick from 0.5 millimeters to 0.7 millimeters. I think these are okay pens. I liked using them for annotating my notes or just using them in my planner to mark events, but I honestly haven't touched these for a year or so. These pens flow pretty well, but sometimes I do have a problem where the ink won't work, and for me, it's only certain colors that have this issue. I'm not sure if that's a general trend or it's just an issue with my pack, but I deal with it. These get an 8 out of 10 just because of that issue, but these come in a bunch of colors and they're fairly priced at about 25 bucks for a 22 pack and I really like that these are accessible because you can just run to your local target and pick a pack up. Here are the Zebra Saras Eclipse. These also come in 0.38 millimeters but 0.5 millimeters is really their standard size. Like the name, they have a clip function to it so you can clip it on your notebook or planner. I've had these pens since I started bullet journaling so I've definitely got some use out of them and I like them a lot. I appreciate that there's a pen grip and that there's some shape to the body and it's not just a cylinder of plastic and that's it. So these are fairly comfortable. The ink flow is great. Sometimes it does have a hard time, but it's pretty rare. These get a nine out of 10, just because these are definitely great pens, but I don't really find myself reaching for these a lot because they aren't my perfect pen. And again, I really hate when pens don't have a good ink flow, but other than that, these are comfortable and a good price. These are Pilot Juice pens. They're pretty similar to the Zebra Sarasas as they come in the same sizes and the pen shape is literally the same concept. I think these come in about 40 different colors and shades and they even have metallics. These pens are absolutely amazing. The ink is just juicy and they work so well. They never stutter and they are so smooth to write with. These are 
my absolute favorites and I use these every day. These easily get an 11 out of 10 just because the ink is really rich and it's super nice to write with. These are similarly priced, the Sarasas, so I recommend you try these first before getting your hands on the zebra pens. This is a Sakura Jelly Roll pen which come in a wide variety of sizes from 0.5 to 1 millimeter. I think of these pens as more decorative than functional, meaning I wouldn't use these on a typical basis like for notes, but I'd use them more for little doodles in my planners and journals. The best thing about these pens is that there are so many types of these pens. They come in solids, glitters, shimmers, metallics, and a lot more, so you get a wide variety to choose from. These get an 8 out of 10 because this is another pen I do experience a lot of ink flow problems with, but when they do run, they work really good, and they have really fun and pretty ink colors for me to choose from, so these are definitely a must-try because of all the different variants they have. Here are my Uniball Signo Broads, which are all 1mm tips. These come in white and metallics, and that's pretty much it, but there are regular Signos that come in 0.38 with more colors. Like the Sakura Jelly Rolls, I think of these as more of a decoration pen than an everyday use pen. These pens are also really smooth to write with, and this is probably my favorite white pen because Every other white pen I've used is either just too weak in terms of pigment or it just stutters a lot, but the white signal works the best for overlaying on titles and stuff. These are a 10 out of 10. There's nothing really wrong with them. I enjoy using them a lot and I think they are just great pens. Moving on to fine liners, this is a fairly new pen, which is a uni pin fine liner. I haven't had much time to use these, but when I do, I think they're pretty average. It does deliver ink perfectly, but it just feels rough to write with. It kind of feels like I'm writing with sandpaper. It's kind of weird. I think it gets an 8 out of 10. I mean, it's a fine liner and it works good, just the writing aspect is a little off. Next are Sakura Pigma Microns, which are basically the most classic fine liner there is. Now, these pens can get fine because they come in various sizes all the way from 1mm all the way down to 0.05mm. These feel nice to write with every time I use them and they last a long time. These pens here are literally the same pens I picked up when I first started bullet journaling three years ago so they are meant to last. They easily get a 10 out of 10 because they are just the classic fine liner and they perform perfectly. I love using these for any black lines I need to make and are my absolute go-to black fine liner. Next, we're moving on to some super fancy fine liners, which are the Uni Emot pens. Now, when I say fancy, I mean fancy. These come in packs of five, which come in about $13 each, but there are also bigger packs out there. These are the nicest fine liners I have ever used. The colors are all super pretty and vibrant, and there is never any ink stutter, which they shouldn't for three bucks a pen. I love using these for annotating my notes, and they again just have the prettiest colors to choose from, so I vibe with them a lot. Another cool thing about these is they actually come with their own stands, so you don't have to shove them in a pencil holder or anything like that. These are definitely a 10 out of 10. You definitely get your money's worth with these pens, and they are just such gorgeous and perfect working fine liners. Moving on are some more affordable fine liners, which are the Arteza Inconic Fine Liners. The ones I got came in a pack of 48, but you can get up to a pack of 72 for around 40 bucks, which is a pretty good deal. I think the only issue I had with these pens is the point actually bent and snapped off one of them when I was using it, and I wasn't even really using that much force on it, so yeah, that was interesting. But I think despite that one problem, they get a 9 out of 10 for being affordable, having good ink flow, and also just have a bunch of pretty colors to choose from. Moving on, this is a Zig Clean Color Dot Marker. It's basically a combination of a dot marker and a fine liner. I really like using these for marking tasks in my bullet journal, so I use these pretty frequently. I do want to note that these are not cheap. They are about four bucks per pen, so they definitely are an investment pen, but I kind of think that's fair because despite me using the same pen every day, they haven't worn out at all. The dot still keeps its shape and doesn't get bigger over time, and the fine liner doesn't wear out, so it gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Next are Crayola Super Tips, and I just want to say it just just go get them, like seriously. <laughs> I know they're just regular markers, but these things come in so many different colors and shades and they're just beyond affordable. I literally bought a 100 pack for 15 bucks and you can't beat that. They're also amazing for the fact that you can do calligraphy with these because of the angle aspect. The tip never really wears out and they do last a long time. I've never had one of these dry out on me before and that's pretty impressive because I use some of the same color pens on a daily basis. These get 11 out of 10 because overall you just can't go wrong with these. They are a great starter item for any beginner and seriously just 
just go get them. Moving on are Posca paint pens. Now I got these because people absolutely lost it on TikTok. So it made me wonder what all the hype was about. So I got a pack for myself. I am personally not a fan of these. I think I got pretty upset because the tips got frayed out super fast and I took pretty good care of them too. But other than the frame, the color palette was good and I think they're good to use for artists. And I really like the look and feel of them. I enjoy that they took time to make the packaging reusable for storage. But these get a 6 out of 10 from me. I just did not have a good experience from them and I have had a few dry out on me, which is pretty disappointing for these being 40 bucks. Now onto brush pens, I'm gonna start with the Pentel Sign Pens. These come in a pack of solid colors, or you can get this pack filled with dimmed down colors and pastels. Of course, you can also buy them individually. The point isn't too fine or flimsy, and it bends perfectly when you write, but not too much to where you can't get a fine line when you lift pressure off of it. I use these all the time for subtitles on my notes. I really like them because they have really good ink in them and the colors are true. So these are in a 10 out of 10 because they are the perfect brush pen in my opinion. If you're starting off with calligraphy, I recommend you try these first as I really fell in love with them quick. Moving on, this is the Tombow Food Nosuke brush pen. I got the dual pack where it comes with a hard tip pen and a soft tip pen. I have one of them, but I'm not sure where the other one went but I have used it a bunch before. I think these are okay. I think the writing aspect is off for me because the hard tip pen is too stiff and the soft tip pen is too bendy. The Pentel sign pens feel like a good mix of both, so that's why I prefer using those instead. Also, I feel the ink doesn't last long in these. I'm not sure if that's the point in them or something, but I often have streaks of lighter ink in my writing or sometimes the ink doesn't even flow out in the first place. I give these a 7 out of 10. Again, I think they're pretty average. I believe that these are a good pen to get you started to kind of learn your preference, but they're just kind of eh. Next is a uni pin brush pen. These are also fairly new, so this is more a first impression thing, but I really like these so far. The ink is pigmented, so it makes the best solid black lines ever. I think the brush tip will take some getting used to, as it's a little more flimsy than I want it to be, but seriously, the ink on this thing is amazing. This gets a 9.5 out of 10 because it is definitely one of my favorites, but I'm still not 100% in love with it yet. But yeah, I think it works great and the ink is really impressive, so I recommend you try these yourself. These are Arteza Twee Markers, which mine is a 48 pack. They're a dual tip pen with a brush pen on one side and a fine liner on the other side. Honestly, I'm not sure what to say about these because I have no clue what they're actually supposed to be. They claim to be watercolor brush pens, but this is probably the worst brush pen I've ever worked with. The brush part is even flimsy into the watercolor brush that came with my favorite Castell watercolor set. This thing isn't fun to write with. You lift off the paper and it's just impossible to get a thin line. So it kind of functions like a marker at that point. These are a 3 out of 10. I think it's two points for good colors, another point for having a fine liner side, but that's it. These just make me mad to write with and I don't understand their purpose. I would just not get these. Now onto bigger brush pens. I'm gonna start with the Sakura Koi. They have the most standard body in the world. It's just tube and brush tip. I think they're easy to write with, but they have frayed out for minimal use. I've only used these about 10 or so times for some titles and they already have a fraying problem. So I think these deserve a 5 out of 10. They're pretty plain. There's definitely better brush pens out there worth your money. I just can't see myself buying more of these in the future. These are Tombow dual brush pens. Like the name, they have a dual aspect with a brush side and a fine side. These are expensive, but definitely an investment, and I can tell you they are absolutely worth your money. I still have the same pack from three years ago, and it's like they haven't even been touched. The tips don't fray, they blend nicely, and the color selection is amazing. These things are just so nice and smooth to write with, and I seriously love them so much. These absolutely deserve a 10 out of 10 because they work so well. I can't imagine asking someone if they like these and they say no. So if you do have some extra money to spend, I recommend investing in these before trying something else. Now onto pencil, this is the Uni Crew Toga, which I feel a lot of people like and I do too. It may just be a pencil, but it feels nice to write with. Now I'm not going to swatch this because it is just a pencil. You're not going to see anything crazy. It's more of a you have to experience it yourself thing. I do recommend this because it is overall a good pencil build. It looks nice, but also functions nice. This gets a 9 out of 10. If you're willing to spend 5 or so bucks, then go get it. But if not, like most people, then it's just not an absolute life changer. You're not going to miss out on anything. It is just a pencil, but it's definitely a good one. This is a Kokio Fit Curve, and man, this thing is a thick pencil. It's good to write with, but also a little too big of a pencil. 
It's almost like I'm holding a large Sharpie, but it does write nice. I guess an 8 out of 10 for being a decent pencil and being comfortable to write with for hours, but the body is just too big. Now, I only have two whiteouts right now, which this is one of them. It runs smoothly. I've never had an issue with it. This is a 10 out of 10 because it's the only whiteout I've ever finished and it didn't break on me. This is a plus wiper, whipper, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it to be honest, whiteout. This thing is built well and it's made to last. It's honestly a little bit better than Muji Correction Tape. So this also gets a 10 out of 10 because again, it's made to last, made to not break on you and it just runs smoothly. This is a Kokio Miri Keshi eraser, which has a different millimeter size to erase with. It gets a five out of 10, just because it doesn't really erase well. Next is a Kokio Kato Keshi eraser. The whole point of this is to always have a fine point in their eraser, and these are super cool to me. While they are cool, like the last one, they don't erase well, so they get a seven out of 10. This here is a Kokio Urban Monochrome Ruler. This thing may be small, but it actually opens up and extends, so you now have a bigger ruler. This thing is perfect because it can be compact, so you can just shove it in your pen case, but also extends to fully cover a regular sheet of paper. This thing is built well and feels nice in your hands. There is another ruler with the same concept, which is a Midori Multi Ruler, but I personally have gotten sick of it because it's just a flimsy piece of plastic and won't stay straight when you write with it. You seriously have to hold it straight for it to be perfect, so it's alright. The Monochrome Ruler gets a 10 out of 10. It's a nice piece of stationery and it's built well. The Multi Ruler, on the other hand, gets a 4 out of 10 because it's just flimsy. I'm surprised I haven't snapped it in half at this point, but it does have a cool concept. Here's a kind of cool piece I like showing people, which is my Kokio Harinax Stapler Stapler. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Anyways, it's a stapler stapler, which rather than using staples, it cuts a hole in the paper and folds it to keep papers together. This is an 8 out of 10 because it works fine, but it's really overpriced. I think you can get one at Daiso for a buck fifty rather than paying eight bucks for this one. So now I'm gonna talk about planners and loose sleeves. First is my iconic Muji Weekly Monthly Planner. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've been using this for years now, so you're kind of familiar with it. But if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm here to show you. So when you first open it up, it has three years worth of calendar overview and also has a bookmark string which is handy. Flip to the next page and you have a whole year's view of calendar space. This is more a basic events page like marking birthdays and holidays and you also have month to month calendars as well. I used to use these a lot when I first started using these and it was really useful but now I just rely on google calendars because it's just there when I need it. And next is the juicy part which is the weekly planner system. Each week has space for each day where you can plan and the other side is a blank grid space for you to do whatever you want with it. It also has two counters at the top showing you the current month and next month and just to kind of give some inspiration if you're into the stuff this is kind of what I've done with it. I used to just put important reminders and events on the right so I could see them but now I just decorate with anime and game characters and the last 20 or so pages these are just blank grid spaces for you to do whatever you want with. You can put brain dumps, notes, drawings, and whatever back here. The cover has comes with two pockets to put random papers or cards in. I don't use it really but I like that it's there for when I do need to use it. This earns a 9.5 out of 10. The layout is perfect and they really took efficient to the next level. It's 0.5 off because they seriously could have added some nicer paper so it didn't ghost as bad as it does. But other than that, this is seriously a must-have for any student. Moving on to one of my favorite journals to use, which is a Midori A5 Grid. This is another journal I've used for a while and I actually have two now, so I've definitely gotten some use out of these. I really love these because of the grid it has. I don't know why, but it's just really appealing to me. The one thing that will always bother me about this notebook is just the ghosting. Now in the near one I got in August, the quality has gotten better, but in my old one it was so bad I had to skip pages and glue them together. I couldn't even take photos of them without seeing the ghosting on the pictures, so that was really annoying and made me finish my first notebook really fast. It gets an 8 out of 10 just because the ghosting problem, it has improved, but it's still pretty annoying and it's sort of an expensive notebook being 16 to 20 bucks for one of these. So I really wish they put some thicker paper in here, but other than that, I love using this for my anime journaling. Now this is kind of a bullet journal notebook, which is Notebook Therapy's line of Suki notebooks. Books. This one specifically is a Suki Moonflower. This thing is like nice. They sent me this a few months back and I enjoy using it a lot. It's 160 GSM paper, which means it's got some thick paper. It's so thick that you can actually see the gold on the side of the paper. This comes with two bookmarks, which it's just nice to have an extra one. And because of how thick the paper is, there is no ghosting and I am so in love with it. This notebook also lays flat, which is really nice because binded notebooks can kind of be a pain to write with if it doesn't lay flat. This easily gets a 10 out of 10. You get what you're paying for 
and I love that the quality is really there. This is as good as an Archer and Olive notebook, so I kind of recommend this instead so you save about 10 or so bucks. Moving on is the Paperage. Paperage, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but this is their Donna notebook they have. This is the most basic of notebooks. It's a dot grid and the paper just sucks. It's affordable, but it's just cheap quality. There's other notebooks out there with better quality and for about the same price. So this is a 3 out of 10. I'm not really sure what to talk about because it's just really plain and there's nothing special about it. This notebook is more for random things like notes to myself or practicing my calligraphy and that's pretty much it. So I recommend you just pass on this one. Here's a little bit better notebook which is the Paper Ideas Dotted Notebook. It has 100 GSM paper so it's not the best but it's decent. When you open it up it has a little page for your name and a title and this also comes with a table of contents if you're into that. It comes with two bookmarks which is a plus and it also has numbered pages which I really like. This is a 7 out of 10. I like the layout and all the little things they put in here like a table of contents and numbered pages but of course I wish they just put in some thicker paper because it would make it a lot better and it just avoid the ghosting issue. Now onto the spiral notebook. This is the Muji dotted notebook. This is definitely budget friendly as it's only five bucks. This is my second bullet drop I've ever used and I liked it because it was just a nice little plain notebook to get me started. It does ghost pretty awfully. I have skipped some pages before to compensate for that but I can't really complain for five dollars. I think this is great to start with because if you're just getting into bullet journaling it's a good notebook to test the waters with and once you've gotten into it you can upgrade. This earns a 9 out of 10 because it's budget friendly and a really good notebook to use for bullet journaling or notes and seriously if you're just starting off with bullet journaling I recommend you try this first. Now I have a school notebook. This is the Kokia Smart Ring Binder and I gotta tell ya, you gotta try one of these. I actually put this on my Amazon wish list, and someone bought me a pack and I was so excited to try and have this. What you're seeing are all of my AP environmental notes which I've taken outside of this notebook. I just decided to put them in here. It's essentially just a notebook but the spiral opens so you can take certain notes in and out as you want. This means you can also shove your own paper in there which is exactly what I did because I like using grid not lined. This does come with a few sheets of lined paper though. If you're wondering how this works, you just push in a little button at the top of the spiral and it opens and now you can take out anything you want. This is so insanely useful to me because I am always finding myself wanting to switch around pages because they aren't in the right place or wanting to take pages I don't need out and putting them into storage. This helps a lot when you're splitting up notes between units because you can have all the notes you need for this unit here and then any others just leave the rest in another notebook or storage. This deserves a 10 out of 10. It's just such a cool and useful concept and I have definitely been stuck on this ever since I got it. I think it's another must-have for students so you can just take around the notes you need and not have to carry around a bulky notebook all the time. Here is my Muji binder. This is in the size B5 which is a pretty typical size for notebooks and binders. Now when you get it it's just a binder. It does not come with all this stuff. I'm just saying. First is this clear bag which I bought and never really used but hopefully I will in the future. And I also have some of their B5 dividers which are great quality. They're thick and sturdy and I actually decorated these for my subject back when I was taking handwritten notes. I think this is built well. The rings are a little janky and scary because I feel like it's gonna take my finger with it every time I close it, but it's okay. They're also a little smaller than I want them to be. I think this gets a 9 out of 10. It's a good price and I enjoy using it for my notes, whether it be for storage or for my current units. I have about three of these and I think I got all of them for less than 10 bucks, which is a pretty good deal. It also just looks nice, so I recommend you try this yourself. Now with loose leaves, here is my Maliko A6 loose leaf. I got these recently, but I'm pretty impressed with them. I actually enjoyed these a lot and made a bunch of spreads with them. I made little Genshin trading cards and these were the perfect size for them because A6 is about two thirds the size of A5, which is what I usually use. The ghosting isn't too bad on these either. It's barely noticeable when using dark pictures or pens, so I was really happy about that. This loose leaf gets a nine out of 10 only because I think it's a wee bit overpriced, but it's definitely good paper for journaling and I haven't had any problems with it. Now on to Muji Loose Leaf. I have bought a quite a few packs because I always heard good things about it and it's just not. <laughs> this paper is pretty awful and I am just ashamed I ever even bought it. By the way, I want you to pay close attention to the words bleed proof because newsflash, it is not. This paper is pretty thin and just feels worse than the paper in one of those 70 cent notebooks. And this paper is not bleed proof. I actually swatched all the pens for this video on here just to prove this. It's kind of disappointing because you use any marker on here and it just bleeds through. And even if if it doesn't bleed through, it goes so bad. It gets a 1 out of 10. It's paper, and that's it. Now for 
my favorite paper, which is Marmon Loose Leaf. They actually make a bunch of different sizes and colors, but I just stick with these two, which are the ruled and gridded papers. This paper is so luxurious, like the paper is actually soft. That's how nice it is. They really thought the small things through, and I like that. This paper has a little spot for the date in class. It also has little names on the paper, so if you want to make a straight line, these help you with that. Overall, it's get a 10 out of 10. It's such nice paper, and the quality is just so good. Moving on to the last thing, which is pencil cases. I'm going to start off by showing you this East Hill Big Capacity Pen Case. This thing is really good as it comes with multiple functions. You have a pocket at the front, a zip pocket on the inside, and also storage for any pencils, and then of course you have the main storage area. The thing that's cool about this is it actually holds Tombows. It also expands for more storage if you wind up not having enough space, which is another plus. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 only because it's a little flimsy, but other than that, it's amazing. It's affordable, I like how it has a bunch of storage options inside, and it's just a good case to have. Another storage and organizational friendly case is a Lahit Lab book style pen case. This case definitely soothes my need to be organized as everything is attached to something and I really like that concept. So if you're very OCD with your pens, this is practically made for you. It earns a 10 out of 10. It's affordable, it's neat, and it's very sturdy. You throw this at someone and it will hurt. It's a very nice pen case, which you don't have to dump 20 bucks on. Here's the Notebook Therapy Suki pen case. It's a really nice feeling pen case. Definitely flimsy, but the fabric is nice. Now the way this works is that you keep it in this state for storage. I'll put some pens in there, and here are some little tabs you use to pull the case down. As you can see, it now turns into this, and it also stands up, so you can see the pens you want and just grab what you need. It also has little pockets on the inside which are a little hard to get to. A lot of companies have picked up this concept and I think it's a really cool idea. It gets a 7 out of 10 though because it's just overpriced. This is $20 and it just doesn't feel like that. I think you should just go on AliExpress instead because I'm 100% sure there are cases like this on there and you could probably just get one for half the price or even a quarter the price of this. Last thing is my all-time favorite pen case which is this Masta standing pen case. I definitely gotten some use out of this if you can't tell and it's for a good reason. You basically unzip it and open it up and it stays open by a magnet in the case. It has a little thing for storing whatever like whiteout and erasers and of course it stands up and it's overall just a good size for me. Not too big, not too small and it's just perfect. This easily earns a 10 out of 10. It's another cool concept. It's sturdy and it keeps its shape. Overall, it's a cool piece to have, and I secretly hope you get one too, because it's honestly really underrated. And that's pretty much everything I own stationery-wise. If you made it to the end of the video, honestly, congrats, because this is a really long video. Since you didn't make this long, you'll have to let me know in the comments what your stationery go-tos are, as I'm always looking out for new stationery things to try and review. Of course, thank you so much for watching, and be sure to check out my other social medias to see more content from me.